Hello everyone, in today's video I wanted to continue playing around with the Patriot Missile Launcher. And uh, if you remember last time, we put together a video basically wondering why you can only fire in one direction. Basically what I found out from an expert was the fact that basically the launchers themselves are the reason why they have to only fire in one direction. Now the reason this is, is the designer, at least the person who operated the Patriots, basically explained it in such a way that when we fire these things, or they're launching directly at the target rather than straight up and then turning to point at the target in order to conserve their energy. And one of the things that they were talking about was the fact that some of the more modern missiles, the errant, for example, do not really have the ability to shoot over the shoulder, which I thought was kind of interesting. So what I thought we'd set up today is a quick little scenario. If you take a look at the uh, date as well as uh, roughly where we are, I was just curious to see just how effective or ineffective the Patriot 2, this is the Pac-2 version, was at actually engaging, or at least the command version. So I put together a little scenario where we have, you know, a rack over here, and they're going to inconvenience us. Well, it's more than inconvenience when you get struck by a big missile with a bunch of their weapons. And we're going to go ahead and try out our Patriots to see what's going to happen here. So what do I have? I have uh, basically uh, three different Patriot batteries. I've kind of pointed them, oriented them in the direction of the targets. They're basically uh, ready to fire. We also have a iHawk is an improved hawk. It's a P2 Super I version, which will kind of help us out if we get any leakers. Now keep in mind, we're not dealing with any Iron Dome business here. Now, one of the interesting things is when I was building this scenario, and I found this kind of fun, my Scud batteries, which are going to launch directly out of a rock, which starts over here, did not have the range to actually get into that part of Israel, which I thought was kind of interesting. As a result, what I had to actually do is move the Scud batteries over here, and uh, that's, a, that's a bit of an inaccuracy on my part there, but again, I just wanted to test it out kind of directly. So let's go ahead and give it a spin and see what happens. So on this pause, I'm going to fast forward time a teeny bit here. Go ahead and take a look, see how things are going. It's going to take them a few moments before they can launch. I think it's a 35 second delay, and the first couple scuds are going to get launched. Now, one of the most wild things, if you've never tried this before inside of Command, I'm going to go grab one of these missiles real quickly here. Let's take this one right here. We'll go ahead and go to 3D view. One of the slick tricks here is if you actually switch to 3D view, these missiles will literally travel all the way into space in order to get themselves to their destination, which makes sense because they are basically, you know, they're ballistic weapons. They travel like that. So go ahead and here, we can see this guy right there. Perfect. So you can see he is uh, cruising here, pretty high altitude already, and I haven't really done anything yet. But what I'm going to do is speed up time just a little bit. Go ahead and grab this one right here. And he looks pretty good right here. And you can see we are at, let's see here, uh, Mach 5 or so. Altitude is over 100,000 feet here. And you can see this thing just going up. Let's go ahead and pop over to Israel again and see how things are going so far. Now, notice we were able to acquire it pretty much right away at an initial altitude with our very, very long range, the Tipsy 43 here. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to reacquire it until it basically starts to re-enter from space here. Now, luckily, these skids did not have the capability of having multiple warheads at this time. Unfortunately, they were not nuclear. Otherwise, this would get much more complicated. So now notice the weapon is coming back from space here. Like I said, we'll go take a peek at that because it's just like the coolest little thing if you've, like I said, not had a chance. This is real time. Notice how fast these weapons are re-entering here. Go ahead and pause for a second here. Grab our little Scud battery. I'm more interested in the Scud itself, not the battery. Let's go ahead and unpause. And you can see this thing, just how insanely high above the ground this thing is. And then it starts to just start spiraling downwards and uh, re-entering the atmosphere here. And it's just, it's an incredible, incredible weapon when you really think about ballistic weapons. And the fact that they had any accuracy at all. You know, that's something else I'm always super impressed with. Let's go switch back over to Israel. And we were just able to acquire them, which means our patriots are going to start going to town on these things pretty much at any moment. One thing I would love to do that we can't do in this particular version is go ahead and tell it to ignore DLZ calculations and have it just fire as soon as it's in range. But I noticed one of the Patriot batteries is immediately getting to it, and they're popping these missiles off quickly. Now, the interesting thing is I'm kind of curious as why this guy is not joining in on the fun. I kind of want to order him to join in on the fun. As a matter of fact, I'm going to order this guy to join in on the fun. I'm going to order this guy to join in on the fun. And you know what? We'll order the Hawks as well to join in on the fun. We really don't want to take a chance that the weapons will get passed. But um, from what I'm seeing, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And that's why you make sure when you engage weapons, you always engage them directly. So each one of these Patriot missiles casually missed. And if we actually look at these things in 3D, we'll be able to see exactly what kind of took place here. Zoom in a little tiny bit here. Yep, it's exactly as I expected. The Patriots are basically trying to chase after a re-entry weapon rather than trying to intercept the weapon. So unfortunately, these are going to get through and they are going to strike our cities pretty effectively there, which unfortunately just demonstrates the fact that the system, while well-designed, unfortunately did not fire at the optimum time. So I'm not satisfied with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reset my scenario again real fast. And I'm going to change my rules of engagement because I was really not thrilled about that. WRA, we'll come over here. Ah, shooters per salvo. 
go ahead and do one of these sort of things. Now, let's see here. Micro guided weapon, ballistic. Here we go. We're going to order four units to fire at each one of these weapons, and we're going to fire two each. Let's see if that improves things just a tiny bit for us. Speed up time. Here comes the launch. Unspeed up time. Take out God's eye view, and now let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and order these guys to help out as well. We have 48. We'll allocate two each. That looks good. We'll grab this one. We'll lock on all these guys. Two each. And let's see what happens this time. Now we have a slightly more direct target that we can take. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Imagine with the fireworks above the sky, here we be. Now, what I'm really, really curious to see real fast, and I don't know if I'll be able to see this fast enough, is just the orientation of all these weapons here. I don't think I'll be quick enough. Uh, no, it's got the right idea. It's got the right idea. So it looks like we got several of them. Several of them did leak through, unfortunately. Look at how many Patriots are in the air right now. These things are very expensive firecrackers. And, oh, there goes one of our cities, and it's going to hit another one of our cities, too. Interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. Again, a lot of this just happens to happen to be the way that our particular weapon platforms are oriented. So let's go ahead and take a look at losses and expenditures. And we went through 18 missiles, and they went through 12 or six total scuds, which is interesting. Let's go switch back to um, Iraq real quick here. I believe I have more than that. I think, like I said, I think I had a few more. And there's 18 allocated total. Like it says, it takes a little while to actually get these things loaded because they have to put them back onto the launcher. They have to re-elevate the launcher. They have to program the missile, and then they can fire it again. If I actually take a look here, it'll probably say you have a certain... Let's take a look at my magazine real quick. And yeah, we got 18, but we're currently reloading, which could take us a little while for that to actually take place. Now, if we made this a real cluster truck of an attack, things would be different. But as you can see, even though we fired that many missiles, about three missiles per incoming ballistic weapon, we were only able to shoot down basically a few of them. Most of them still got through and still struck our cities. Now, if you attack with all 48 missiles at the same time into Israel, oh boy, would that have been interesting. So there's one more thing I'm going to do while I have a moment to go ahead and try it. Now, I'm very curious to see if we try to take the modern version of this particular weapon platform and use it, and is it going to be any better? So let's go ahead and delete that, delete that, delete that. Let's go ahead and get ourselves our Patriots. We get the new one with the Errant, which is an amazing system. Let's see here. Japan, I was really hoping for the United States. Ah, here we go. Let's get the nice one. And we'll get the newest of the nicest of the new ones. There we go. Lambdas. That'll do it. Grab that one. Go ahead and flip on its radar system so we can see which way it is oriented. Copy, copy. Let's go ahead and flip these guys on as well. Flip these guys on as well, and let's see if things go a little better. Speed up time a little bit. The weapons are going to be leaving in just a moment. There they go. Go ahead and unfreeze. Weapons on the way. All right, things will be a little bit different this time, I expect. Okay, missiles launched. I don't like these launches, though, because they are way, 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 way too off angle here. Let's go double check my ERA. WRA, rather, not ERA. And we'll go ahead and say automatic. There we go. Let's see if that improves things a little bit for us. There we go. <laughs> now let's see what happens. Speed of time a tiny bit. I like how the interceptors only have to go up a little bit. This is like a weird little dance they're doing. Whoop, 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 oh, one got through. Yeah, you're never going to be able to catch up to that before that hits the ground. It's trying, it's trying. <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. And boom, it looks like the thing missed. Interesting. So we can see that even with the more modern ones, those ancient Scud technology is still pretty effective as far as getting through. And again, you can see how modern systems like Meads or Thad are being developed in order to make it even more difficult for those missiles to get through. So hopefully you found this video interesting. Like I said, I just wanted to explore that technology just a tiny bit more. I can't wait to start seeing things like lasers, which we know won't miss, but at the same time as are going to have a little bit limited pack, at least in the initial versions of them. Enjoy.